Hello guys, welcome to Mark Shrimp Tanks. Today we're going to do a little a room tour. I haven't done one of these for a while. I see a hair on the lens there. We're going to do a little shrimp room tour because I haven't done one for a while. Uh, quite a lot has changed in that time. I've actually redone probably 10 of the tanks. I have something like 19, 20 tanks, something like that. And I have redone 10 of them since the last time we'd done a shrimp room tour, right? So we're going to go over here. I'm going to switch this main light off as well because I think it'll help you guys see in the tanks that tiny little bit better and guys I'm going to make this a little bit different as well um, I'm not going to feed the tanks because I think it's a bad idea for me to just feed the tanks for you guys to see the shrimp because what tends to happen is I, I end up overfeeding tanks right to make videos for YouTube and stuff so I'm not going to do it anymore I'm going to put the shrimp first I suggest you guys do the same don't overfeed your tanks you have bazillions of babies so that's not that lovely show. Alright guys, let's start over here on my newest rack. This is where I have my Opa Uli, Sulawesi, Blue Dreams, Green Jades, Super Crystal Reds, Blue Boltus, so we do in the bottom here. Um, I'm just going to quickly go over every tank, I'll tell you what's in them. Quick water parameters, feeding, etc, etc, you guys will see. Uh, Opa Uli, this tank is about a year and a half old, single sponge filter, a coral gravel, uh, as a substrate it's quite important with these because it keeps the pH and stuff quite high. This is actually a, a brackish salt water tank, I should have mentioned that in the beginning. Uh, Cheeto algae in the back, I'm trying to get that to grow a little bit better by dosing little amounts of um, iron as well. So this one is uh, improving all the time, we do have babies in this tank. And this is the type of tank where you guys, you just don't feed it at all. You've, you're lucky if you feed this tank once a week, right? And it's one of the things I, the big mistakes I make with shrimp keeping is I keep on overfeeding the tanks. So that is why today I'm not doing it for the camera, right? I want to get out of that habit of doing it for the camera because the less you feed the shrimp, as long as they get what they need, uh, the healthier your tank will be. It's very, very important that you keep your water parameters very, very clean. Let's go down here. We'll go into that one in a second as we turn the corner. Um, I've recently done quite a few big cullings in this, at least three cullings in the last week and I've removed um, all the shrimp that weren't Blue Dreams, right? so I had quite a few different things in here, I had uh, uh, chocos, I had uh, black rose in here as well, just your box standard uh, shrimp that wouldn't be in a tank that should be Blue Dreams, right? so anything that looks like blue jellies, all that kind of stuff came out here as well. The large, large Marissa snails are also out of this tank because I did notice that they were um, eating the sponge filters in here, right? So I put them in a bigger tank where I'll feed the tank more heavily with vegetables and stuff, right? So there you go, freshwater tank, water change once every two weeks, 10%. That's what I'm doing with most of my tanks. This tank here, the Opioli tank, never gets a water change. A wee baby right there floating up to the surface. Green jades again. Exact same as this tank here. I did a massive cull in this tank last week. And guys, I'm, I'm quite shocked, right? When you, when you see the cull tub, you'll see where all these shrimp go, right? But um, I honestly, I took about 30 shrimp out here in the first cull, and then the second cull, it was something like 20. And it just doesn't look like there's anything in here anymore. But there is. I fed it yesterday, and the shrimp were fine. There's like maybe 20, 30 shrimp, something like that. That's what you've got to do. You've got to do the hard culling with needles. So I did the exact same in here yesterday. Again, fresh water tank, double filtration, pat mini, etc. Guys, as well, I want to just say quickly before we go into something else. Um, I probably will do away with the pat minis in my tanks. And it's just because um, there's a few issues with them. And that is, one, they can't overheat small tanks by a degree or two right so when you have cold colder water shrimp you don't really want this in your tank uh, the other issue as well is uh, I, I'm quite prone to power cuts here right? I had uh, probably three in the last three weeks three or four weeks when right? every time the power goes off these power heads go off there's a little death trap there waiting for my shrimp to climb into them right so unfortunately I cannot trust my power supply here enough to have the pat mini filters on all the time because shrimp do climb in them, right? And I have seen uh, when the powers come on, just like a plume of red. It was actually in the painted fire red tank over here. I noticed that a plume of red where 
the, probably I think the fire red was chopped up inside and spout as it came on. It's, so that's something I want to avoid because in some of my tanks I have very very expensive shrimp and this is just a killer if you don't have a consistent power supply like I don't have here. Just a thing, living in Norway you will always get stuff like this because uh, we have heavy heavy snowfall, trees falling over, over power lines etc so I don't want to risk it anymore, we're going to go back to the old favourite sponge filter, power goes off, nothing happens. Super Crystal Reds, this tank is doing amazing, this tank is, is uh, I would predict in the next month we'll start to see babies all over the gravel, I'm going to love this as well because the red is really really vibrant in these guys. I bought 12 I think, no deaths, two buried females so far, and uh, it's doing very good. Red Root Floater is doing amazingly nice in this tank, this is ADA Amazonia. See the red roots, that's where it gets its name from. Asian style under gravel filter. Simply guys, this is just uh, uh, media on the bottom. This is an under gravel filter with media on the bottom. You have sponge in the middle, soil on the top. But you can see how there's a little bit of compactation with this uh, ADA Amazonia. Right, so there's the whole tank. I don't want to draw out this video mega long. This is the blue boltus. Tank guys, I just want to point out the red root floater in this tank and how it's very, very different because we have a slightly different soil in this tank. The base is Eddie Amazonia, but in our Asian style filter over here, we actually have master soil, right? And, and to me, guys, it's, it's very obvious when I go like this side by side. You guys might be able to see it, but to me, it's noticeable that this tank has, uh, it looks much cleaner, much much cleaner, I don't know if it's because it has less tannins but it's, to me it's very noticeable, let me know in the comment section below if you see it as well, and see the difference. The Boltus tank, these guys have had bazillions of babies in here, very very lucky so far with this tank, it's only a couple of months old as well, you guys can probably see, if you look along the gravel you'll see baby bolts everywhere. And it looking cool how clean it is. Let's get up to the Sulawesi. It's had some changes. Um, I want to concentrate on this tank with algae growth over the rocks and uh, the substrate. Right. So, guys, what I've done with this is I'm removing the plants because I want the algae to get all of the food. Any extra nutrients that's in here, I want the rocks to get covered. I can actually start to see it happening in quite a few of them. Right. So, this is what we want to happen. This again is a freshwater tank, it's a high pH tank, something like over 8 pH. And these guys, you probably see them, and they're uh, very sketchy. The actual best time to film them guys is at night time with no lights on in the room, it's the only time I can come in here and really have a good look at them, because they're kind of sketchy. I have a lot of buried girls in this tank as well, so it won't be long until we have babies, right? And I'm hoping that they become less sketchy because uh, I reckon the food source will be spread out a little bit thinner and they'll have to move over the rocks. Okay, see them? Aren't they cool? Sulawesi. Let's go on to the, a tank you guys probably have not seen yet. This is my uh, calcio tank. And again, guys, there is probably 15, 20 shrimp in here. But I'm not going to feed the tank just to get them out to the front of the camera. I'm, I'm, I just don't want to do that anymore. These guys are gorgeous. If any of you guys watched my stream the other day, I will, will have seen how many shrimp are in this tank. Again, red root floaters, very simple tank. AD Amazonia. This tank was only cycled for six weeks. And um, I think it was just a teeny bit too early because when I put the shrimp in, they were very static. But we got away with dosing Secom Prime one mil every single day fix the issue right so this tank is pro properly cycled now looking good this tank will be full of babies in no time at all and it's well worth guys it's well worth me changing all my tanks over like I did I was very very worried that uh, when I changed my tanks my, my I wouldn't have enough content for YouTube for a while but it is uh, it was definitely the correct thing to do because since I've changed all my tanks over to 
uh, new substrates. The, the shrimp that are in the new tanks, I either have babies or I have buried girls, right? So this was one of the tanks that was done uh, the most recently, probably about six weeks ago, something like that, right? And we do have shrimp in here, but they're very small. Big thanks to George Cohn for sending me these guys. You can see them here. Uh, King Kongs. It's going to be a King Kong tank. You can just see a couple at the back there. I think in total there's something like 12 shrimp in here. So again, guys, as I was saying, I'm not going to feed the tanks just to get footage for YouTube because uh, this is a great example. There's bazillions of food in this tank for these guys, right? I did actually try and feed them yesterday. And I did try and feed them a week ago. And they didn't come to the to the food. But just simply because um, in new tanks you will have an absolute abundance of biofilm. There will be loads of stuff growing all over um, all your things in the tank, all your leaves, your dishes, your rocks. These are ceramic rings. I like to have these in the tanks because I notice the adult shrimp don't crawl through them. But the baby shrimp do, right? So it's an extra little spot for the baby shrimp to get some more goodies. Red root floors again. If you're wondering why I'm sticking with red root floors, it's because the roots tend to grow that little bit shorter than things like uh, Amazon frog. But you see, doing good. Crystal red tank. Lots and lots of plants. Again, a new soil. I think all of the ones I've showed you so far have all been new soils. Uh, actually, guys, yes, I would be correct in saying that all the ones with active soils are new soils. Right, so we have uh, shrimp in here from two different sources. Peter, my friend here in, Hon in uh, Honifoss, where I live. And again, George Cohn, big, big thank you to you guys for sending me lots and lots of stuff to refill my tanks. Uh, this tank does have babies as well, but I think... Um, it may have been from buried girls that I didn't see when I acclimated them to the tank because uh, they, they haven't been here long enough to be buried and then from my time can you guys know what I'm talking about pardon me for burping a little bit Bazura crowns big big thank you to George again there's already a buried, buried girl in here you can just see her dead center actually in between the two little things of your vision is very very good you can see the layout of the tank Again, red root floor. We do have soaking oxidators in some of the tanks, guys, but I think I'm just going to call it a day with them because I just simply can never remember to order the stuff and refill it. And I think uh, they're good in the hotter months if uh, your tanks start to get above like 28, 29, 30 degrees Celsius. But apart from that, I'm not really sure they're necessary in a tank. Fancy crystal reds. Crystal Black's buried girl on the filter here. Just noticed her yesterday. She's posing for the camera. There's another girl in here, molted as we speak, because you can see the boys rushing around looking for her, right? Red root floaters, Anubias, Anubis, Anubias, whatever you call it. <laughs> I'll always get them two mixed up. So Wassertang. These guys are gorgeous again. Little mixed. Um, red Relay, these are from my Paint and Fire Red Tank below. I'm putting a little bit more effort into this tank because I do notice, guys, I do neglect the Neo Tanks just that little bit. So again, Red Root Floaters. We have some uh, Trident Java Fern here. Tank is looking good. Biggest uh, tank for my Neos, I think this one is. This is my uh, Paint and Fire Reds. This is where I house all of my bigger uh, Marissa snails. And these guys get things like uh, whole lettuce leaves, whole cabbage leaves, because they, they are eating machines, basically. Tank is doing good. This tank gets 25% water change. The, this is I'm going to explain something to you guys before we move on. Uh, water changes, the smaller you do with an active soil, um, the more luck you will have with no deaths and more baby shrimp rates. So that's what I'm doing. I do 10% uh, water changes every second week. Oh my god, look how blue that girl is right there. Very, very blue. 10% water changes every second week and I drip the water back in, guys. That's what the big, big change in the last few months has been, which has helped tremendously. Now, I can't actually remember the last time I saw a dead shrimp. If that helps any of you guys, right? So by doing the smaller water changes and dripping it back in, 
you will see much much more baby survive as well right so i think that's what i'll do is i'll go back and i'll check all my videos where i've done water change videos before in the past and i'll delete them because uh bad information isn't good i don't think so watch out for that as well probably do another video on water changes very very soon as i said painter fire reds in here a lot of them i'd actually did a big big call in this tank yesterday and it was a hard cull, guys, because a lot of these shrimp in here look like uh, cherry shrimp. They were all went into the cull tub. They look like cherry shrimp, right? So this tank was uh, neglected for some time as well. This is my pride and joy. I love this tank so much. Um, this is my fancy crystal red tank. Again, guys, this was redone. These are bot shrimp. And they're very, very active. Again, I was very lucky in, in that when I got these shrimp, one of the girls was already buried, and she's actually had her babies in this tank. Right, and it's, it's proof of the concept that uh, you're better to drip acclimate your shrimp to the tank. And guys, when I do it, right, just, just as an example, you have your container here, your tank, you put your shrimp in the container, you drip, use your drip acclimation pipe into your container here, right, and use your TDS mirror if you have one to measure the TDS of the water that's in uh, where the shrimp came from and the TDS of the tank, right, and do not put the shrimp in until the TDS in the container matches the tank. It makes a massive, massive difference. You will have no losses at all. Um, before in days gone by, I used to get losses with... Uh, buried females they'd just be dead the next day kind of thing or they would try and molt and they'd lose their babies and you know this story right i don't have that issue at all anymore right, so that's what's allowed me to get shrimp from people that are buried and let them have their babies in the tank without killing them and they're very active very very active beautiful beautiful shrimp i cannot wait to see these guys really really properly um, yesterday was the first time I did notice some babies walking along the gravel because it, these these ones I don't know why but they kind of hid for a little while the young in here uh, this uh, uh, what do you call it a sponge filter came off the wall yesterday and when I went to reattach it there was like three or four babies in the back I can actually just see over here that tiny little gap there you can just see there's a teeny little baby if I see any at the front, I'll let you see them, but these guys are absolutely gorgeous. This um, algae is from the uh, Vins Ecological Bacteria in this tank. I think this is one of the few tanks I actually did the dosing rigorously and properly with Vins stuff. And you can see the outcome of it. all this uh, algae. I know this might not be what everyone likes to see. I thought I'd give it a go just to see what happens. These guys, look at them. Oh my God, they're so beautiful. Okay, so we will have tons and tons of babies in here. You can already see the shrimp are very, very active. Again, I think I've got something like 10 shrimp and you can see they're all active in here, all swimming all over the place. So it's a very, very good sign. Soil is Akadama. TDS is 125 parts per million. 250 uh, US Siemens. Red root floaters, this filter will be getting changed. This is what we will be doing uh, quite recent, uh, quite soon is changing back to our... The thing that we used to have up here, you know with the overhead air thing. We're, I'm actually going to go back to that pitter, the guy that I know in Honofoss is going to help me do this kind of stuff, right? So, looking good. I'm trying to see if I can see any babies right close to the front for you guys, but I can't. I cannot see them. But the babies are tiny. They're very, very small. Let's go down here. Again, we have this Asian style uh, air filter here. Guys, the, the reason I'm using these is because um, the soil, it actually cleans the water, right? This is why um, an active soil is so good for uh, bee shrimp. It's because it actually... It, it, by oh my god i'm muddling my words so bad it cleans your soil really 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 well by ion exchange right big big buried mama there hanging down you see her hello there how are you doing 
This girl has a few eggs as well. These are my Red King Kongs, or Ruby Reds as some people would call them. The Ruby Reds. A girl at the back is very big, you see her? Yeah, so the reason I've been using these is because it gives you that extra layer of cleaning in the tank, right? See with your pot minis, with your uh, sponge filters, all you really have there is you have uh, mechanical and biological filtration, right? But here you actually have ionic filtration. The water has to pass through the soil that is, uh, I think it's negatively charged, if I, if I, I don't know how this works. And it actually draws in all the impurities of the water as it passes, right? So that's why some of my tanks, uh, my B-shrimp tanks, look mega, mega crystal clear compared to my Neo tanks because we have a different soil here. All right, so uh, these guys have uh, eggs as well. There's another girl there and another girl there with eggs too. Same spot. So we're expecting a baby boom in here. Lots and lots of lovely biofilm. This is what you're looking for. This is the boa tank, boa constrictor, again, red root floor, sponge filters, minimal planting, although I, I do wish I did a little bit more uh, with my planting. Shrimp are, they are in here, <laughs> on the filters at the back, seems to be a favourite place of them, are they any underneath? No. There's one here, lovely galaxy. Right, so I have very, very minimal numbers in this tank. I actually lost uh, five or six of my uh, Galaxy shrimp that I had in the other tank before. You know the other one that you guys, you guys will have known about. You see them over here, see? Coming out from under the filter. Another one in the other filter over here. Yeah, so that's what prompted me to change all of my tanks, is that I actually lost quite a few of the Galaxy, and I was kind of, Kind of really heartbroken that I'd managed to get these awesome shrimps someone had given them to me. And I know how expensive they would have been, and we lost some of them. Right, so from then on I thought, you know, I really need to uh, stop being so lazy with the water changes and stuff. And uh, not with the water changes, I need to stop being so lazy with uh, changing soils. Because guys, I've always done it where... Um, I've always tried to beat old tank syndrome, etc, etc. You will have seen videos of me doing that before. And guys, it, honestly, it is not worth the hassle of trying to save an old soil because there will be an abundance of bad bacteria under the soil that you can do the sweet F.A. nothing about. Sweet F. I can't use the swear words. And another little galaxy in the back there, isn't there? Switching oxidator. Right, so it makes sense just to change out the soil uh, every year and a half, two years. And going back to the thing we were talking about with cation exchange with the negative ions in the soil, and once you have old soil, that is lost. Right? So that's part of the big reason why we use an active soil in the bee shrimp tank is because it actually uh, cleans the water really, 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 really well. Right? It creates a very, very healthy environment. So there you go, the Galaxy tank is doing well as well. Again, guys, minimal feeding. Here's my mixed uh, zebra tank, zebra pintos, again there must be a girl in here. You can see guys what I mean, I'm not feeding the tank deliberately, artificially feeding them to get them to come to the front. So I think you guys should not do that as well. I do it sometimes in my live stream videos because uh, I just won't get any views. But I want you, today I wanted you guys to see what this, what the tanks are like uh, without the feeding at the front. Again, it's just a little experimental filter, Asian style filter. Cherry shrimp tank, looking good, lots of algae. Uh, this is, uh, let me see what's in here, pandas, but they will be getting moved to the big tank to go beside, beside the King Kongs. Tangerine tigers. Looking good, look at the size of that, it's a washer tank. Tigers all over the glass. German red pintos in here. Looking good, how is that tank? Look at that lovely biofilm. So guys, as you can see, right, I'm not artificially feeding the tanks for you guys. Um, but I'm waiting for them to have babies, right? So I knew this when I did this, that this would happen, where some of my tanks would look very, very empty for like videos and stuff 
for a little while, it's just to be expected. Tanks would look empty for a little while, and then we would have baby boomerangs. So in, in and up my tanks, I mean, I have, here I have uh, girls that are buried and will release 20, 25 babies each, so it's all coming soon. You want to have a look at the cold tub? I actually thought one of the big cray crays in here would, was dead the other day because uh, it was just sitting motionless over here. And it was sitting there for a little while and I went to touch it and it was just a shell of it. Oh my god, it's dead. But it wasn't dead. Look at all the shrimp in here. It wasn't dead. Oh, the thing, big thing that's changed in this tank is that top filter here is no longer connected to the tank because, uh, guys, this has been running for about five years and it's just, just absolutely chock-a-block full of rubbish, right? So I would have had to empty this and redo it and blah 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 and I can't be bothered. And the planting is nice. The pothos will do very well in here for, as long as I remember to water it every so often. So what we've done is we've just actually added a part mini filter over here. And the flow in the tank is much, much, much better than it was before. Put all the shrimp on the filter over here, you see them? So guys, hope you've enjoyed today's video. It's been a little bit different. I'm probably very, very dark in this image. Let me see if I go over here. <laughs> Please excuse me for wearing this big orange fleecy thing. I'm feeling a little bit under the weather today. I probably have uh, the cold. It's suddenly got very cold in Norway as well. It's like minus four, minus five outside in the morning. So I think I didn't dress properly for the last few days when I've been walking loose enough. I think I have the cold. I have a little bit of a head cold, been sneezing, the usual stuff. But guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Please leave a like and comment if you haven't already. And uh, I'll catch you in the next one. Have a swing game, guys. Blah, 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 blah.